Hey there, Wendy here with Jazzy Doodle Designs, and today is a kind of a two-for-one kind of video. I just did a review for the Posca pencils, so this is to show you how the pencils work in action. And so I will link the first video, the actual review of the pencils, in the description, and I'll probably throw up a card if you want to go and check that out first. But I thought it would be fun to do a little coloring tag while I color this image. And the tag is going to be Coloring Goals 2024. And so my idea behind that is to tag certain artists and have them answer questions about their coloring goals for the year. So I'm going to go first, so grab a drink and your Hannah Lynn book, and let's go. Okay, number one. Do you have strict coloring goals for 2024, or are you more loosey-goosey? So I would have to say... It's kind of a combination of both. So in some ways, when it has to do with the channel, I have pretty, like, I wouldn't say strict goals, but I definitely put some numbers in there and I try and hold myself to those in order to meet what I call good standards for having a YouTube channel. Um, when it comes to other things, like I'm not really good at being like, oh, I'm going to color three Hannah Lynn's. I just, when it comes to coloring, I color what I feel like coloring or what you all have picked. And that's my challenge is to go with the mediums and the books that you've chosen and I like that challenge and I'll be doing some of that again this year but as far as um as you go as we go you'll see how my style is kind of a combination of both so number two how many pages do you want to color this year now I thought this was kind of an interesting one because I had colored I think it was 106 um, pages last year. And I thought that was pretty good. Uh, but then I was watching Meg's, uh, Disney Meg's channel. And I'll put a link in the description box for her channel. But guys, she colored like 600 pages plus last year and I was completely blown away. I was just like, how is that even possible? So I don't know if she's using fast mediums or shorter books like this one, because to me there's a difference between this book and a Kirby book. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, you know, if you color simpler images, they don't count. That's not what I'm saying. But I was absolutely floored because I'm a fairly new subscriber to her so I'm not as familiar with <laughs> what she's colored but I'm curious so in terms of my goal I want to shoot for about 120 and this is my thought if I surpass that I'll be super stoked but I don't want to set too lofty of a goal because I do tend to, um, I don't do as many pages like this one in that smaller size and more simple format. I do Kirby books and Hannah, um, Hannah Carlson books and Joan. well, I want to do some more Joanna Basford this year. Um, but things like that, that just take a little more time. So, my number one goal, if you've been on my channel before, you'll have heard this, is you only compete with yourself. Do better than you did last time, whether that's in page numbers, how you color, your techniques, anything. 
If you live your life that way, you're going to be much happier. So question number three, what coloring medium would you like to learn or improve this year? So the medium I'd like to learn this year is gouache. I just got some gouache and I'm excited to give it a go in the books. I like challenging myself to use different mediums in my book because quite honestly, I love colored pencils, but if I color too much, the repetitive motion of coloring and then moving the mouse to edit, um, I can really inflame my hands, and so I like basing my mediums or basing my pencils with something else. And so I'm going to be trying gouache this year. Other medium I would like to improve on is ink tents. It's something where I've done some pages with ink tents, but I definitely have a lot of room to improve. So those are the two mediums that I would like to learn and or improve. So that brings me to question number four, which is what technique would you most like to improve? Now, I think the technique I want to improve is just being a little lighter handed and being a little more patient in my coloring. I like bold, vibrant colors, as you can see from this image. I love that punchy in your face colors. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, when I see other people's work and it's done in pastels and muted tones, I think it's absolutely stunning. It's just every time I set out to do it, somehow I end up with the saturated <laughs> punchy colors. So um, these Posca pencils fit the bill, you know, they're a fast lay down. They are smooth. They're vibrant. I, you know, you'll have to check out the review. I go through all the things, but, um, I really like them. But so that's probably my biggest goal is just to hold my pencil back a little, uh, take my time. Don't be so quick to want to get to the end because to me that's where the dopamine rush comes when I see the page completely completed and just, you know, in all of its glory. I love that. So that's probably it. And then touching on the ink tents as well because that is a technique that... Um, that I would definitely like to improve and work on the different ways to use ink tents. So number five, this is kind of a fun one. What spending slash collecting goals do you have? So some of you, that may mean a goal to not spend as much money or but I want to hear if that's the case, but I also want to hear if that's not the case and you have some goals to finish off a collection. Maybe you have all of Joanna's books, but one, or you have all of Kirby's books, but a couple. What is your, um, what's your collecting goal? What's your spending goal? So the answer to that for me is I want to fill out Denise Klett's books. I have um, Birds in the Forest, Gnomes in the Neighborhood, and Birds in Paradise. And I would like to add, is it Fairies in Dreamland? I think is the other one. And I think there's a mermaid one too. No, I have mermaids. I said that. Um, I like her style, so I want to add that to my collection. I That's the one that really comes to my mind. There's definitely other books. Guys, you could you could spend a lifetime just collecting really cool color books. 
oh, excuse me, it's the end of the night <laughs> and I'm trying to get this done. My mom's been sick, so uh, my schedule's been very off and um, so I normally am not editing at night. So forgive my yawns. I hope I didn't make you yawn. Um, so that brings us to what? Book number six. What book do you most look forward to working in this year? So is it Makiko Ayatomi? I don't know if that's how she says her name. The Yozuri Mouse author or artist. Um, she has a new book out called Seasonal Reese for Plants and Friends. And I just got that book and I really, really like it. And I plan on doing a, a joint project on Instagram with that book. So I'll be working in that one a lot. Um, I am going to be doing a poll with my subscribers and letting them choose a book that we will concentrate on. Now, I don't know if that'll mean complete it, because if you pick something like Kirby Roseanne's World Within Worlds, um, unless that's the only book I work in, I don't know that we could complete it, and I really don't want to just commit to one book. So I look for a poll coming soon. I know I said that before, but uh, like I said, my mom's been ill, and that's... Um, always got to be first and foremost is making sure that I'm taking care of family first and I know that you all would agree with that so um, that's why that's been a little delayed but um, I some people have put in some suggestions and so those will be up in our options and it may be a two-part poll where we narrow it down and then narrow it down again so we'll see how that goes because i really do want to find a book that the majority is happy in and then um so that's a book i'm looking forward to working in i also want to work in the fantasia book i bought that last year and um there is a flip through on the channel it's a little bit of a rarer book nowadays because it's been out for quite a while. But oh my goodness, it's got some amazing pictures in it. So I'm going to leave it with that because um, I could go on and on. What creator goals do you have? For example, doing a live or the number of videos, buddy colors, etc. So... Last year, I wanted to do two videos a week. So that was, you know, 52 and 104. And I think I ended up with 136. And that pace seemed good for me. It was something I felt like I could maintain. And so I think I'm going to keep that as my goal. I'm going to, my goal will be two a week. And then there's going to be those weeks where y'all get three. Um, but I think anything more than that is just a little too much for me right now. And anything less, I, I don't feel like I'm giving you guys enough value. I want you to find value in your subscription. So um, I would like to do a live this year. But it's always tricky because I don't want to be doing a live with myself. <laughs> so I've been waiting for the channel to grow, which I've been excited to watch it grow. It's really taken off towards the end of this year and even more so in January. So I'm super excited about that. And so let me know for sure in the comments if a live is something that you guys are interested in. Because once again... There's no point in doing a live if none of y'all are chatting with me. <laughs> but I sure would love to do that because I think community is really what I'm striving for on this channel. And I'm looking for ways to have that, to have that connection. I've done some buddy colors and that really connects me to the person that I'm buddy coloring with. 
and I get to know them a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm always open for buddy colors. I'm open for lives. I would be open to having a Facebook group or, or something of that nature, whether it's Discord or Patreon or whatever, just just to have that community where we can be a little more open with each other because I know sometimes people don't like commenting because their comments are open to literally all of YouTube if someone clicks on the video. So I, I like the idea of a closed community in the sense that we can feel more comfortable sharing our work, sharing, asking questions, getting help with things, and that kind of thing. So let me know where you guys are at with that because you guys are the best community. I have the best subbies of anyone. I don't care what anybody says. And I'd really like to drive content that you guys find valuable. So, and I do have, like I said, uh, Tanya Colors and I are going to be doing an Instagram tag for the seasonal wreath book and we'll be doing some color alongs in there and that'll be something that you guys can uh, use a hashtag and show us your work and then we haven't hammered out all the details but I know at the end of the year I'll be doing a review of all the different people and we may even do it seasonally since the wreaths are seasonal and I think that that would be very exciting that once a quarter we show all of the of the pages that came in having to do with that season and then potentially have a, a giveaway at the end of the year or something like that. But I don't want to speak out of turn because we haven't really um, hammered that all out. But definitely look for that towards the end of January, beginning of February. Okay, moving along. So what new to you artist will you be adding this year? So there are a couple. Um, I've had requests for, I think it's, I don't know if it's Polly Brune or Paul Brune. I'm not sure how you say that. Um, Melopamini Chazapin. You know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Um, I've had requests for those two books, so I'll definitely be doing those. I don't have my list in front of me. If you've asked me for a book, I wrote it down um, so that I can make sure that I'm trying to fulfill requests from you guys. But I apologize, I don't have it in front of me right now. Um, but... I know those for sure. Um, a Symphony of Cute Animals is another one that people have asked for. And Lulu Mayu. So those books I haven't colored anything in except for the Symphony of Cute Animals I have. Um, Lulu Mayu. I added her last year, just right at the end of the year, like for I don't know, I think it was around Black Friday there was a sale. And then Hannah Lynn. Um, so, oh, and the Christine Karen book that I got from my son. So those are some of the things that I hope to add this year. But um, <laughs> since I just started last year, there's a lot of new to me artists um, or books that I haven't worked in. Number nine, do you have a book you would like to complete this year? So last year I completed A Pumpkin Party by Matchstick Mouse and he has a Christmas, I think it's a Christmas party, but it's a Christmas book that's an actual storybook. So I will be coloring that in its entirety. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description for the book. But I will be coloring that for sure to give to my grandson to go along with the other book I colored him. And then 
Little Bunny Book of Thoughts has one called Little Bunny Book of Friends, and it is super cute too, but the pages are very glossy, and if I can find a way to make that a pleasurable book to work in, either with um, satin glazing liquid or gesso or um, the spray, the workable fixative, if I can figure out a way to make that enjoyable to work with, then I certainly will. And that would be one that would be on my list to complete. Now, as far as some of the other books, I don't know that I could complete an entire book in a year because throughout the year I let you guys pick books and y'all don't always pick the same book. So, um, so I hope that that answers that question. And the last question that I have is, what is the best benefit of coloring to you? So I know that we all color for different reasons, some for depression and anxiety or mental health, some just because they find it a fun hobby, some um, just for the artistic love of it. You know, everybody kind of has some for pain management. So there's just a lot of uh, different things that I think are benefits. I would really love to hear from you what you consider the biggest benefit of adult coloring is. For me, I would probably have to say the biggest benefit to me has been purpose and community. So let me break that down. So purpose, a few years ago, I guess it's been about seven years, I had a stroke and it really changed my world. I was very grateful that I didn't have the true negative effects, so to speak. You know, a lot of people have strokes and they can't walk again or can't eat. I was blessed that mine was not that way. However, it did change my memory. I lost half my muscle weight. Um, I All of those things happen literally overnight. Um, and I was physically exhausted to the point that I couldn't really hold a full-time full -time job. Now the good news is the stroke was caused because the hole that you breathe through when you're a baby, where the tube connects to your mom, um, that flap never closed. So this is something that many people have. I was just unlucky enough to get a blood clot and it crossed that barrier. So since then I've had that closed so I'm not in any risk of stroke anymore. So that's a good thing. But having worked full time since I was real young, um, literally 16 I was working full time it was extremely hard for me mentally and even though I had been with my husband for many years and we have a good relationship and I trust him, I had never been financially dependent upon anybody before as an adult and it was something that I deeply struggled with. So having changed careers and then now changing um, was spending more time with my mom and stuff like that, kind of semi-retiring, so to speak. I've had a lot of change in my life and just a lot of feeling unmoored. And getting into this adult coloring and finding this community, doing the channel, having all of you cheering me on, encouraging me, writing kind comments, wishing my mom well, <laughs> even, um, has just been an amazing experience and one that I am deeply grateful for. And I really want in the years moving forward to create more community because I do want to be able to provide that back for you, that safe harbor, that feeling of belonging, that 
feeling like you matter and that people care. I really want to create that, whether that's a Facebook group, whether it's a Discord, whether it's Patreon, whether it's it's a little hard on YouTube, quite honestly. Um, so, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I'm really open to y'all's suggestions on that. Because, guys, I do have the best community ever, and I really want to grow it. And I want to keep that, um, that interaction with you guys, right? And so I feel like having a group gives people the space to be able to reach out and freely DM. And I apologize if I've said a little bit of this before, but I got, I had to pause in the editing of this or the voiceover and this is just weighing on my mind. So hopefully I, hopefully I'm not boring you to tears here. But anyway, so that's the biggest benefit for me, and I hope that my channel has been of some benefit to you, but I'd really like to hear, is it, is it, and it's helped me with my depression too, um, and my mental health, but what is it for you? So leave a note in the comments. If you don't feel comfortable, you could always DM, DM me on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, that way it's more private. You can email me at jazzydoodledesigns at gmail.com. Um, or you can be a lurker. I can respect that. I've lurked on many channels in my days. So, but I always enjoy hearing from you. So as far as tagging, where's my list? So as far as the tags, if you would like to fill out these questions, I would love to hear it, whether you have a channel or not. If you do have a YouTube channel, then feel free to do this tag. The tag is hashtag coloring goals 2024 and just tag me at Jazzy Doodle Designs. I would really love to watch your video. I enjoy meeting new or new to me channels <laughs> having to do with the adult coloring community. And even if you're not adult coloring, maybe you're an artist and you happen upon this and you have an art channel, still love to see it. So I am going to tag Tanya Colors, JI Colorist, Be Cozy, Influenced Colorist, Disney Megs Coloring, my Colorful Country Life, and Lobella's Coloring. So their tags will be listed in the description box below. I encourage you to check out their channels as they're all fabulous in their own way. And we all have a little something to bring to the table. And so I encourage you to check them out. So let's talk just briefly about what I'm doing on screen. These Posca pencils have a really smooth lay down. They're not scratchy at all. They almost feel like an oil pencil to me. They're, they're real, um, but they're on the softer side. So I kind of equate oil pencils to being a little on the harder side usually. So I'm not sure what their chemical makeup is. Personally, I don't really care. I either like working with them and oftentimes the color palette is how I choose what pencils I use on particular designs. But I really enjoyed working with these. Now there's only 36 colors and so you are a little limited, but I never felt like I was like, oh, I wish, you know, that color was here. Yeah, of course I wish there was more colors, but I could kind of make do with the colors they had and still produce a good design. So 
I will link in the description box the review for the the Posca pencils where I really break down kind of the price and um, do some testing and, and just let you know my thoughts about them in general. Um, but uh, I feel like this is really straightforward. There isn't a whole lot I feel like I need to say about this video. So I'm just going to speed it up a little bit and set it to music. So until next time, happy coloring.
Thank you for watching another video from Jazzy Doodle Designs. If you enjoy adult coloring content, please consider subscribing. You can now find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. I welcome all comments and suggestions. Don't forget to like the video before you go. And until next time, take care.